In this episode, we will show you when, why, and how to use high speed sync using the Sony camera and the Photox trigger and flash. Hi, I'm Sasha and this is Yannick from Vashio Photography and we are Chicago photographers. In this episode, we will show you when, why, and how to use high-speed sync in portrait and wedding photography using the Sony A7R2 camera with the Photox Odin 2 trigger and the Mitros Plus flash. Okay, so before we start talking about the high-speed sync and uh, taking any photos, let's first go over all the equipment that we'll be using today. Uh, so as Sasha mentioned before, we'll be using the uh, Sony A7R2 camera. So this is, let me just take it off. Uh, this is a full-frame uh, mirrorless camera, uh, I believe it's 42 megapixel. Uh, then we're using the uh, Photix Odin 2 trigger uh, to trigger our flash. Uh, I'm using on the camera, I'm using the Canon 85mm f1.2 uh, lens with the adapter for Canon, uh, for Canon camera, I mean for Sony cameras. So uh, this is a little bit, you know, you can see it's a little bit larger than normally, but uh, this way we can use our Canon lens on a Sony camera. So let me just put it back in the camera. Okay. Um, now for the for the flash and the modifier, so we're using the. Let me just take off the umbrella here first. Okay. Okay. Perfect. So we're using the uh, Photix. Uh, studio umbrella. This is uh, what's the, uh, the cool thing about it that one is very portable, uh, so we use it a lot uh, on our weddings because it packs very nicely and it's very light. Um, two, it opens very easily, so it's in, in, you have a very nice modifier right, you know, within I don't know 30 seconds when you open it. And the diffuser is built in, so we don't waste any time putting the diffuser on the umbrella. So um, this is, uh, it's called Studio Umbrella from Forex. I believe it's uh, 40 inches uh, in terms of size. So if, uh, Sasha, if you can hold it for me. And then um, for the speed light, uh, we're using the uh, Forex uh, Mitros Plus speed light for Sony. Um, this is a magma modifier that we're not going to be using today. We can we'll talk about it some other day. Um, and we're using a standard Manfrotto stand uh, with a bracket for a speed light. Uh, I believe, I'm, uh, I'm not sure whether this is Forex or Westcott, it's one of the two. Um, so this is uh, all the gear that, that we'll be using today. Um, normally we don't, uh, we don't use the tripod for our camera. But uh, to better show you today how we take those photos, we'll be using um, a Manfrotto uh, tripod here with, with the Manfrotto head for the tripod. So here we are in Chicago on a hot summer day. The sun is really high up and the lighting is really bright. There are three ways to photograph in a situation like this using a speed light. The first is using a higher f-stop, the second is neutral density filter, and the third is using high-speed sync. Okay, so we have here the Sony camera with our Canon um, 85 f1.2 lens. Um, before we start using the speed light, uh, we're just going to take a couple of photos of Sasha without um, any uh, speed lights on. So we're just going to take natural light. Here it is. Um, it's okay photo, but there's nothing special. Sasha's face is uh, in the shadow. Um, you can see that um, you know, the light is coming a little bit from behind her. Um, the face is in the shade, uh, and we're using here ISO 50 f-stop 6.3, so the um, a little bit higher f-stop, and we're using the shutter speed of 1 250th of a second, which is the native sync speed for the for the Sony camera. So that's why I kind of uh, keep it here to get the right exposure, but um, you know nothing nothing special here. So the next thing, um, as Sasha mentioned. Um, in, in, in an environment like this, when we have plenty of light uh, during the day, if we, use, if we want to use the, um, any speed light, we have three options. Either we keep high f-stop like we have here, uh, we use the neutral density filter, or uh, we use high speed sync. So let's first start with um, how we're going to set up the speed light so they talk to each other. So first thing, we need to have the Odin 2 trigger for Sony. So this is, you know, this is the, where it says that it's for Sony. Um, let me turn off so that you will see right from the beginning, you know how it looks. So 
after you, um, when you press the power button, it turns on. The high speed sync is set up by the HSS button. So you can press it on, you know, and the icon appears either on and off. Um, so for this first photo, we don't need high speed sync, so we're just gonna turn it off. Uh, so we're gonna put it on the camera, lock it. So for the speed lights, we're using the um, Forex um, Mitros Plus for Sony as well. So the Odin 2 and the Mitros Plus uh, flash are talking to each other. So first you have to turn it on, of course. So after it boots itself. So by default, the flash is in the mode uh, to be put straight on the camera. So we have to put it on the slave mode so that it is being triggered by the Odin 2 trigger. So in order to do this, there's this button called M slash S. Uh, if you press it and hold it, uh, you will see that right now off, meaning that it's not master and it's not a slave or a transmitter or receiver. So all we have to do with the arrows, move up to the options called Odin Receiver, RX. And right now automatically by default it's put on channel 32, group A. Group A is by default and we will be using this group uh, so that we can adjust from Odin 2 just by pressing the A button and moving the wheel. And this is automatically how we will adjust the, the power, or power of the speed light. So Sasha, if you can just put the speed light on the stand there. And uh, next we will take a photo of uh, Sasha by using the speed light and a very, I mean, relatively high, higher f-stop, which in, in our case is 6.3. So Sasha is back in the uh, position, you know, to, to be photographed. Uh, let me show you uh, first, you know, at what power uh, we have um, the Odin uh, to trigger and the flash. So by default, usually in this condition, I'll start at a quarter of a power for group A and see how it looks. If it's too much, I can reduce it quickly. If it's uh, not enough, then I'll just increase the power. So I'm at quarter, I'm just gonna take a quick photo here. There it is. Um, let me just double check. I'm, I'm gonna put on the histogram. And, you know, her face is, it's, it's nice to expose, I think. Um, if you zoom in, you can have a nice, a nice um, uh, light in her eye, spotlight, so that's, that looks very nice. But, you know, we're shooting at uh, 6.3, so you can see that, um, you know, the city is still pretty, put in, in focus there. So, you know, if we want to use a more shallow depth of field, uh, then we have two other options. First is we put the neutral density filter, and which, is, well, which I will do in just a second. And the second option is to, to put the flash in the high speed sync. So for the neutral density filters, uh, we, have, we have two options as well. We can use a neutral density filter that is constant in, in terms of how much light it blocks. This is, let me just put the other one away. This is a, I'm turn off this camera. This is a filter that basically blocks the light. And this was this is a Tiffin uh, filter and the density is 1.2. So it stops a good amount of light. So you can see it's, um, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty black, you know, if you, if you look through it. So basically it just blocks the light so we can use much smaller f-stop, you know, if we want to use a shallow depth of field. The second option uh, is, uh, variable uh, neutral density filter. Um, what it is, is, is basically very similar to, um, to the other filter, except when you turn the wheel, you can make the filter darker or brighter. So depend, you know, so you have some kind of, you know, uh, option here, how much light you want to, you want to block. Okay. So for this option, we will use the, the 1.2 uh, density filter on our Canon lens. So let me just screw it in. This is, uh, so this is the exposure without, before the, uh, before the uh, filter. And I'm gonna screw the filter so you can see right away how everything gets darker, so. Okay. Uh, so now um, we are with the neutral density. So you can see that um, we can open up a little bit uh, more of the exposure. Um, so I'm gonna put maybe now, see I can, I can even use 
1.4 right now when the exposure is correct. So I went from 6.3 to 1.4 on my exposure. Um, and I'm going to um, fire again. And you will see here that because the flash was still at the quarter of the power, if you look at this photo versus the one before, you see that Sasha's exposure on her face is much brighter because we put the neutral density on the camera, so it blocks the light, you know, the ambient light, but the flash is a little bit brighter, so, you know, because we didn't change the power. So, let me, um, let me reduce the power on, on the flash. So I'm gonna probably just reduce one stop and see how this looks. Uh, here it is and it's 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 gorgeous you're shooting a very very shallow depth of field uh you the, the city is just nice and, and blurry of course this is in a situation where we want you want the background to be blurry you know sometimes if you look if you photograph here you want the landscape of the city to be visible but if you want a very nice and um, a blurry background a very shallow depth of field this is a, this is the next option um, to use the, um, so the advantage is obvious here that we can use the native uh, sync speed of the, of the flashes, which is 250 of a second for, for the Sony camera. The disadvantage is that, one, you put a new piece of glass in front of your lens, and uh, two, um, you have to have an extra piece of equipment that to carry with you. So um, it's always something to either remember or forget. And then um, it doesn't matter how good the glass is, if you put additional pieces of glass on your camera, there's always some level of the reduction of the quality of the, of the photo. Uh, Tiffin filters are pretty good, so I don't think you'll be, you know, you really have, um, you'll be able to notice any degradation in quality of the photo, uh, but it's definitely another piece of glass that you, you're gonna be putting on, the, uh, on your lens. So now the third option, uh, let me remove first the neutral density filter. So I remove it. Now we will put the, uh, the, Auden, um, the Auden 2 trigger and the Nitros Plus speed light on high speed sync. In order to do it, as I showed before, it's super simple. All you have to do is press the HSS button and then the uh, the kind of lighting and the H icon appears. It means that now we operate in high-speed sync. Um, the advantage of high-speed sync is that we can use a very, uh, very fast shutter speed up to like one eight thousand uh, of a second for for Sony cameras and many other cameras. Uh, the the really the disadvantage here is that the the flash does lose the power uh, when we use high-speed sync because it has to. It's just not one burst of light. It actually has to fire multiple times uh, as the frame is being exposed uh, to make sure that the, the whole picture is properly exposed when the shot when the camera opens various pieces of the frame uh, doing a very short shutter speed like 1/8000 because when you, when you have 1/8000 second exposure on your camera basically if you have the, the two leaves you know how they work normally if you have 150 to one opens and then the other one closes and that's how it's exposed for high speed sync um, basically what happens is that this one opens and this one follows. So you have the very uh, narrow strip that is being exposed at a time. It means that for every, as, as, the, as the two curtains move, the flash has to power, I mean, has to fire multiple times to expose equally uh, throughout the whole frame. So that's why we're losing the power because the flash has to uh, fire, I don't know how many times, but you know, a good number. So Sasha, if you can go back to the position, we removed the neutral density filter, so you can see right now it's completely overexposed. But what we can do, uh, we can reduce the shutter speed, and we're gonna go, we, we will like go really under, and then let me focus on Sasha. So you see like right now it's really um, a little bit underexposed on her face. We should have one eight thousand of a second. The, the f-stop is uh, 1.4, so I can actually, let me just move it to 1.3. I think it's, even though the lens is 1.2 on Sony camera with the adapter, the max I can go is 1.3. So this is uh, a little bit underexposed. Let me move the flash, again, the power of the speed light to a quarter. Um, actually, a quarter, and see how it looks. So let's. So it's still the the flash. You can see with the with a quarter, it's not enough. 
So we have to put a little bit more power on our flash right now. So let's put, uh, let's put it in half and then see how this looks. So one, two, and three. You can see it starts, it starts looking nicely now. Now let's put on full power. So basically we're at full power right now. And here it is. So now it looks very, you know, it looks very nice. Uh, Sasha, if you can just bring maybe your flash a little bit closer to you. Um, let me let me help you a little bit with the with the sandbag. So, okay, that's perfect. So I just moved the f um, and turn that bra a little bit toward me, so that I hit perfect. Okay. So I don't see that. I don't. I don't want to see the shaft in the in the frame for this one. And then so. The reason I move the flash a little bit closer is that I get I gain a little bit of uh, of power on the flash, and also because the flash is closer, uh, I have a lot more fall off on the light. So Sasha, for this one, if you can just turn your face slightly toward the light, perfect. And you can see this is beautiful short lighting on her face right now. So you know we have you know the one eye you know lit here, and then the other the, the other. Um, part of her face nicely lit and then we have a shadow on her face meaning you know we have a beautiful um, short lighting you can sh turn your shoulders a little bit this way the other way actually perfect that's awesome and turn your face slightly toward the light a little bit more that's it perfect see so this is uh, you know a fantastic way to um, uh, to shoot a very uh, shallow depth of field uh, with high-speed sync the the big disadvantage you see I mean uh, we are very close. Let me zoom out a little bit. So you, you oh, stay actually there, Sasha. So where you are, perfect. So this is how close Sasha was to uh, to the speed light. So you can see it's actually very close. So if you want to take any a broader um, photo like this with a wider lens, either you're gonna have to remove the flash in post production, you know, from the from the frame, or uh, you can put two or three or four flashes within the umbrella to gain power uh, so this way you can move the flash away from it. Of course if you if you move your flash further away the fall off of the light will not be as beautiful as, as we got it here. So here's the photo that we started with today and uh, this was just natural light with the sun behind Sasha you can see that uh, you know the face is in the shadow and and this is this is the photo that we ended up with, which is, I think it's, it's beautiful. The little shaft that we have on the right, it's literally five seconds to remove it uh, in, in Photoshop or even Lightroom. And we'll, we'll post-process this photo and, and share it here. We hope you found this video useful. So in a sunny, bright day like this, and uh, when you want to take a photo while using and use a speed light, you have, uh, again, three options. You can use the high f-stop, which will give you greater depth of field. Uh, but if you want to use uh, a shallow depth of field, you have two options. Either use the neutral density filter that we put on, a, on the lens uh, and then stay within the native uh, sync speed of your speed light. Or you can use the high speed sync uh, like we use here with uh, Photix Odin 2 trigger and the Metros Plus flash. Um, again, this umbrella from Photix, we love it a lot. Um, we're using it uh, practically on every wedding. So if, again, if you find this um, video useful, please like and share this video and make sure to subscribe to our channel so to get notified when we post the new videos. Thank you.